confusion, it's easy to get confused about what a surface model is and what a solid body is. And then knowing what to do with it is even harder. You can think of your surface models as hollow shells or just the skin of your object. And solid models are gonna have mass and volume and they can be 3D printed. We're gonna look at two different examples today of how to use the stitch command in fusion surfaces. So I'm gonna use patch to fill in these two big openings. Create surface patch, I'll select this outer contour, click OK, right click, do it again. And I think we could have done it all in one command. I now have a series of surface bodies. If we go over to the bodies folder up here on the left, you can see all these different surface bodies that make up this design. Now, in order to 3D print this, this needs to be a watertight solid geometry. And so what we're gonna do is use the stitch command to try to put all of these surface bodies together, then fill it in to make a solid body. And you can notice when I've selected these surface faces over on the right in the stitch command, it's calling out the tolerance that it's willing to introduce or change the model in order to solve it and still have a watertight build. If I look at the table, it doesn't call out any gaps. And these green lines show that these surfaces are going together without any issue. If I click OK, it's going to stitch them all together and then fill this up to a solid geometry. If you look at the bodies folder, this now is a solid body. Let's look at this other example. So I have this block and I'd like to stitch it all together. But before we do, I'm going to offset this face. We're going to create a face. So it's sitting off in space and we're going to delete this surface underneath. So we have this block and we have a gap between where this face might connect to our existing design. If we choose to stitch it and we just box select everything, we can stitch this together as long as the tolerance is large enough to take this into account. See these red edges? That's telling me that it's got at least a one millimeter gap, which makes sense because we offset it one millimeter. And so we can come in one at a time to investigate which edge it's referring to. On more complex designs, this is incredibly helpful. For this one, it is rather simple, but we can just drive up or increase the tolerance to be bigger. So one should work. There's no longer a gap. We click OK, it's going to resolve this. It stitches everything together and makes it a solid volume. Now, what's interesting is, did this make this longer because it kind of stretched it to meet everything? This is 125. If we go back a step before, this edge was 124. So it is increasing it to meet this. So it is changing this design. And this is a simple block. Now, one reason you might have to deal with surfaces when you're working with STLs that you might get from something like Thingiverse, you've downloaded a 3D print file and you want to open it up in Fusion. Maybe you want to make some changes, make some slight adjustments. You're going to start dealing with the mesh workspace in this case. In the mesh workspace, under Modify, I could convert the mesh. It will try to convert it. And unfortunately, sometimes the best you're going to get is a surface body. This is not a solid ready for 3D print yet but we're a little bit closer and so what we can do is we can try to just stitch it see if stitch will fix this for us the stitch command prompts and we can see there's 48 free edges when i go through the table to review and click i can see these problem areas where we do have gaps if we do a large enough tolerance it should take that into account so if i do five millimeters that's larger than anything i think in our table and we click OK, it's going to attempt to solve it. It's unable to heal those and put them all together and then fill up a truly watertight series of surfaces. If these are the true problem areas, maybe we can just get rid of them and then come back in and do some surface modeling to design what we want. But instead, I'm going to trim this away using surfaces. I'll do a sketch. We'll do just a simple rectangle to grab this area of concern, and then we'll use the surface trim. This will trim this away. We'll select the two areas that we want to just get rid of. I know that was a huge chop. Let's now do a surface patch. I'll search for the surface patch, select both closed areas, 
or contours, and click OK. We now have patched surfaces there. Now we can attempt the stitch again, and hopefully, because we got rid of those problem areas, maybe we can stitch all of this and enclose a solid volume. Bringing the tolerance down to one, does it still, it looks okay, there's no major gaps. We click okay, it now has a solid body where our surface body was before. And now we could send this to our 3D printer. So if this is acceptable, great, or you can use your surface tools to draw what you need and kind of build this up. Now, what do you do when you're using stitch command and it gives you a solution, but maybe it's just not what you wanted. I'm stitching together these surface bodies, the max, gap is 3.1 so i'll increase the tolerance and now when i click ok it does solve i do have a solid body but i've got kind of a yucky transition when i you zoom in and look at this kind of inverted a bunch of tessellated faces this is not what i want and probably not going to be acceptable even though i have a solid body so be careful when you are using stitch to fill in gaps for you in this case maybe using loft between edge to edge and then allowing for some tangency or curvature will give a smoother transition between, and then we can stitch it all together, giving us more control of how this solves and how it's gonna look. Now, one thing I want you to be aware of, what if you have a solid geometry and you'd like to make it into surfaces? One technique that I've always used is I go to the surface toolbar, and then I just select a face that's maybe not that important, hit delete, it deletes it, and then everything else becomes a surface body. And that's pretty useful. I can now look at, you know, I just have a surface body here and a series of faces, but I had to delete something I could, you know, patch it. But instead, there's actually a, a faster way. So if we go up to unstitch, and then select this solid body, it's gonna break it up into a series of solid bodies without you having to get rid of everything. So you now have a bunch of solid bodies um, that you can now work with, you can hide, you can delete, you can work with. So kind of a cool shortcut to create uh, surface bodies from a solid body is the unstitch, or you can use that delete method I just showed you. Hey, so we're working our way through the surface tools. I hope this helps. I'll see you in the next video.